They don't care about protecting our kids. That's why in perverts are in our schools right now. And by the way, they're in our churches now too. Drag queen story hour. So you ought not use the word. They ought not be one. Greg Locke is a hate preacher with a mega church, probably most famous for his absolute obsession with witches. It seems like every other sermon he puts out is about how his church is being infiltrated by witches. How come you got demons sort of witches are coming to your church? Well, they don't come to my church. That's because your church ain't a threat to them. That's why. That's because your church is yoked up with them. Naturally, people started pointing out that his church seems to have way more witches than the average evangelical megachurch, and he might want to take that as a sign. But he ignored that criticism, of course. So how would he get here? Well, his megachurch is actually a big circus tent with wood chips on the floor. The fact that people are hiding tarot cards under the wood chips as a protest probably isn't helping the situation. People take little tarot cards, the spirit of Santeria and things like that, and they slip them under the chips. I think we'd be shocked at what's under these chips. We're going to take a look at why he's so obsessed with witches, what he's doing to fix the problem, and why it isn't going to work. Let's get into it. So how'd he get here? This all started in February 2022. He came out on stage and announced he was going to hold a burning service. Take a look. We gonna have a burning service. Oh yes, you heard me well. We gonna send that mess back to hell where it belongs. We gonna have us a burning service. I mean a burning service. We're going to get rid of some unholy covenants and alliances and some word curses and some witchcraft that's been spoken over. We're going to get rid of We're going to free some homes. We're going to free some marriages. We're going to burn some stuff. I don't care what Hasbro says. Ouija boards are a portal to hell. So bring some Ouija boards. Get rid of it, tarot cards. You better get right out of Harry Potter mess in your house. That is full-blown witchcraft. It's witchcraft. It was all downhill from there. He burned a bunch of stuff, not just books. But books were definitely included in the burning. But uh, we're gonna start this up. We got all kinds of Masonic stuff. We got devilish stuff. We got every bit of kind of witchcraft, spell books, everything you can imagine. And uh, th this thing is full. So we got clothes, a lot of things. So if you need to get rid of it, as much as you can get, just start throwing it in there. 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 Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. Burn it. He told people not to breathe in the smoke. He believes they'd be possessed by demons if they did. That is insane. There's a lot more to this story. If you want to hear the details, I did a video about it when it happened. I'll put a link in the description. But a counter-protester showed up and threw a Bible in the fire. The sausage on this guy is absolutely astounding. He was escorted off the property. I'm honestly surprised they didn't do something crazy. Greg Locke received wide criticism from people across the political and religious spectrum for that stunt. This is literally the exact thing Hitler used to do during World War II to keep the population from being exposed to ideas he considered to be dangerous. Apparently the criticisms kind of got to him because he responded to some of them. We got people angry, we got people threatening to do everything you can imagine. Homeland Security, people calling us American and terrorists and Taliban. No, they've come against an evangelical Bible preaching, Bible believing church in Middle Tennessee that they deem as a, you know, irresponsible threat to the American Republic. Y'all crazy. The reason he held a burning service in the first place is because he believed that he discovered witches in the church. It turned out that this was just his way of dealing with the power struggle in the church. There weren't witches. They were regular members of his security staff that disagreed with the way he was running things, so he accused them of witchcraft. Problem solved. They're now effectively shunned by the congregation. Nobody wants to get witch on them. This was in early to mid-February 2022. We got first and last names of six witches that are in our church. And you know what's strange? Three of you are in this room right now. 
You better look in my eyeballs. We ain't afraid of you, you stinking witch. You devil-worshiping Satanist witch. We cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ. We break your spells. We break your curse. We got your first name. We got your last name. We even got an address for one of you. It turned out to be only two witches, Gina and Brian Warren. And she said, yeah, and I know a lot of people are complaining about you guys, too. I'm like, how come you've got a homosexual spirit? With one of these guys, you realize that. I, so I told him, it just, stuff just came out of my mouth. 48 hours later, we were a witch and we were fired. You tell me what happened. But the burning service and the witch hunt exposed his weakness. People came up with creative new ways to protest his church, like hiding tarot cards under the wood chips in his circus tent. People take little tarot cards, the spirit of Santeria and things like that, and they slip them under the chips. I think we'd be shocked at what's under these chips. He came to believe that his whole church was possessed by the spirit of witchcraft. He even held so-called independent investigations to root out the witches. Before we continue, I wanted to mention something. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check out my Teespring. Or you can check out my other YouTube channels. I've been reading Greg Locke's latest book, This Means War, on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel. I also cover long-form stuff on my Telltale Unfiltered channel, like Greg Locke's sermon, or Kenthoven seminar series. And finally, you can check out my Fireside Chat channel, where I talk about the intersection between religion and politics. If any of that sounds like it's up your alley, give it a watch. All links are in the description. Anyways, let's watch Greg Locke explain why he started an independent investigation into witchcraft in his church. We've had more assignments sent to our church than probably 20 churches in America you can shake a stick at. We found them. We, we've done our little private investigation work. We found that whole coven of witches. Everybody got mad that I threw out of the church. About every one of them shared the same P.O. box. You know why? Because they're all getting paid by the same people to come bring our church down. But now they're going to have to find another one because we figured out their nonsense and we kicked them out and won't let them come back. And I don't care how abrasive that sounds, you'll get over it. I ain't fooling with witches in this church. Not a one of them. Like I said, this is his way of dealing with internal power struggles, and back in February 2022, he claimed there were six when there were actually only two, so I can't tell if this supposed investigation he held was cleaning up the power struggle or if there really were protesters who made their way in and pretended to be witches in his church. But either way, it's deeply funny to me. He sees witches around every corner. This kind of thing was actually pretty common in the 80s and 90s. There was a time in US history known as the Satanic Panic, where everybody, even secular authorities, believed Satan were getting into all kinds of shenaniganery, setting people up, infiltrating churches, generally wreaking havoc. They will try and infiltrate your church. They will try and set up whispering campaigns against the pastor and the elders. They may even try to seduce the pastor. For two years, I was involved in the Baptist church. I was constantly complaining about the pastor's sermons being too long, being too dry, sowing discord between the people gossiping about others. It's like we're living through it again, bizarrely. Anyways, obviously somebody has been going to his church to protest, if he's finding tarot cards under the chips. So he's come up with a plan to deal with it. Here's the plan. He's getting rid of the wood chips. But then after mass deliverance, all the chairs are coming up because we're gonna do something that's gonna kinda get rid of the nostalgia effect of the tent meeting, but we have to do it. We're having some skid loaders coming here tomorrow. We're getting rid of all these cedar chips and we're going with the turf all the way through the entire tent because these witches keep slipping in here, hiding stuff in the, in the chips, hiding pentagrams and amulets and all kind of little uh, infinity symbols and tarot cards. I, I won't be surprised. We pull that stuff up. There might be a full-blown Ouija board up under these chips. I don't know. They keep hiding stuff. It keeps my nerves tore up and I can't make people keep going in here digging up every week. So we just going to get rid of all the hiding places for the witches. Somebody say amen right there. So it sounds like protests are working. It's honestly sad that he's so obsessed with witchcraft. It's not real, but he can't accept that. If he accepted witchcraft wasn't real, he'd have to accept the possibility that God isn't real either, and he can't have that thought knocking around the old cashew. So anyways, he seems to be so obsessed with witches at this point that even the Christian world is starting to notice, and somebody apparently made a good point to him recently. It was so good that it seems to have stuck with him. Listen to this. It's from mid-August 2022. I get these preachers all the time. They're like, well, my goodness, 
we believe in standing for the gospel, but we ain't ever had this stuff happen in our church that you talk about having in your church. How come you got demons stirred up? How, witches are coming to your church? Well, they don't come to my church. That's because your church ain't a threat to them. That's why. That's because your church is yoked up with them. You church praying some of the same voodoo prayers the rest of them wicked people are praying. No wonder your church ain't stirred up by a bunch of witches. I'm telling you, when deliverance hits the house and demons start getting stirred up and the fire gets cranked up, them serpents start coming out. Psst, all over the place. Ah, I see. So your church is infested with witches because God loves you the most. Got it. That's an interesting justification. You know, I don't believe all this stuff. I think it's ridiculous. But if I were a believer, I have to say, I think this argument would sway me. Seems like his church doesn't really have God's blessing if it's constantly being attacked, right? Back in December 2021, he was dealing with another issue. His tent was hit by a tornado in Tennessee. The tent didn't fare so well, and so our security was there. They've taken some pictures. My wife's been over there. Uh, some of our staff are already on the way. We have some men that help work on our tent that uh, are heading that way now to assess the situation. It blew down the entire right side, which you have to understand. In a tent that large, the canvas is so heavy that what that did is then that pulled down the weight of the trussing and the stage. Of course, on the trussing was all of our speakers and our lighting and all of our gear and our rigging. It ripped through uh, the, the screens, the 18 foot screens that we have. The, the stage was pretty much destroyed. The backdrop, the drum kit, all of that. Now, I'm no geologist, but I'm pretty sure Kansas is the state that's known for being flat. Granted, his church is in Mount Juliet, which is right near Nashville, and there aren't as many mountains there. It's not unheard of to have the occasional tornado run through. But again, if I were religious, that type of event might be enough to convince me he was on God's bad side. A few hundred years ago, people used to look at this kind of thing as a clear sign that the church had lost favor with God. If I were Greg, I'd be sweating. You know, I would leave this guy to eat himself alive with fear over witches infiltrating his church if he weren't so hateful and destructive. He's a conspiracy theorist to the core, and one of the things he hates the most is being called a QAnon conspiracy theorist. I get why that would bother somebody, if it weren't true, but in this case, it is. He's willing to believe just about anything QAnon has to offer. He even went to the January 6th attack and is absolutely obsessed with the idea that he's persecuted, not to mention the fact that he absolutely can't stand Democrats. He thinks every Democrat is possessed by a demon, which is why he kicked them all out of his church not too long ago. No witches in the church, and I guess that includes Democrats. I'm to the place right now, if you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church. You can get out. You can get out, you demon. You can get out, you baby butchering election thief. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. I don't care how mad that makes you. You get pissed off as you want to. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. They are God-denying demons that butcher babies and hate this nation. You cannot be a Democrat and a Christian. You cannot. Somebody say amen. The rest of you, get out. Get out. Get out in the name of Jesus. That's obviously illegal for a nonprofit. If you aren't paying taxes and you can't explicitly endorse or oppose specific candidates, campaigns, or parties like that. He claims to have given up tax exempt status, and that tentatively appears to be true, though I haven't verified it completely yet. Even if he is paying taxes, what he says and does is still deeply wrong. He talked about kicking out Democrats in a recent sermon, too. Check this one out. You say, well, you know, the way you preach causes us and them. It is us and them! It is us and them. Listen, we ain't got to say it. We done kicked the Democrats out two months ago. But we ain't got nothing else to lose. I can't even think of nobody else to kick out. But don't try me. Don't try me. <laughs> My wife said, I can. We'll talk later, baby. <laughs> you can preach the first Sunday when I'm in prison. Praise God. <laughs> when he's in prison. He believes he's going to prison. The guy is obsessed with being persecuted. He needs it. He feeds off of it. It's like he dreams about it. He's been publicly begging the January 6th committee to come pick him up for years at this point. He cries about persecution as he actually persecutes others. And instead of arming good, trained veterans of the military to protect our kids, which they don't care about protecting our kids. That's why in perverts, are in our schools right now. And by the way, they're in our churches now too. Drag queen story hour. Say, so y'all not use the word. They ought not be one. 
The guy has no self-awareness, and it's sad. He swears and uses slurs from the pulpit constantly. I thought the Bible said something about being a model for the rest of the world. You're supposed to act the way you want the rest of the world to act, right? And what happened to the verse about loving your neighbor as yourself? Letting God do the judging. He's obsessed with actually persecuting people. He has been for years. This is honestly mild compared to some of the other stuff he's said. But he's the one that's mistreated. He's the oppressed one. He's the one suffering under the boot of tyranny. He lives in a family fantasy land, and I really don't know how to snap him out of it, if it's even possible. If you think this is bad, you should see what he has to say in his book. That is absolutely unhinged. Like I said, I'm reading that right now on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel, so come check that out. It's something else. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, you can support me in a few ways. First, there's Patreon. That's probably the best way. But if you want to get something back for your support, you can check me out on Teespring, or you can check out my other YouTube channels. Like I said, I've been reading Greg Locke's latest book, this Means War on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel. I also cover long-form stuff on my Telltale and Filter channel, like Greg Locke Sermons or Kent Hovind's Seminar Series. And finally, you can check out my Fireside Chat channel, where I talk about the intersection between religion and politics. If any of that sounds like it's up your alley, give it a watch. All links are in the description, as always. Okay, thanks for watching, guys.